I'm going to look at the tests that we can do when we are looking at differences between two independent groups and that the outcome is measured on the continuous or scale and sometimes for ordinal data as well. So on this flowchart we're looking whether the outcome is continuous or scale. We will take a look to see if we meet our parametric assumptions for the two independent groups which is the second row down and that would lead us to an independent t-test and then if we don't shifting across to the man whitney u test so the data i'm using has come from this paper on bmj open um, looking at whether or not comparing older people to younger people just by telling them about it will um, impair their hand grip strength and persistence so on any of these papers if you see uh, this little link here, data in Dryad, you can click through to that and bring up the data from the paper which is um, really a great way to learn because you get to look at some real data and you also get to read through how the authors have analysed it. So for this paper we'll take a quick look at the first table where they looked at the baseline characteristics um, to see if the groups are equal and then also to look at in table 3 where they've got some outcome measures. Now in this paper they have used ANOVA and chi-squared tests and I'm not going to look at these today I'm going to look at because there are just the two groups the comparison and the control group I'm going to just look at doing a t-test um, where appropriate and then we'll fiddle around and have a look at the man Whitney U where it's not appropriate. So the p-values may not match exactly just because we're doing a slightly different test but that's okay. So as a background to doing these tests I'm using Laird statistics to follow the assumptions through. Uh, they do give a great explanation and so when I talk about the assumptions that I'm looking at, I'm following it from this website and they may be listed differently in different websites or if you have a different textbook um, and similarly with the Man Whitney U. But we'll start off with the independent T. So if I open up this data, we have some demographic variables such as age, sex, education, residence, and also they measured the arthritis because that's going to impact on their measurement of the hand grip strength. The two main outcomes for the study are the average hand time and the average hand strength. So I believe each participant would have um, used this hand grip thingy, I don't know, a number of times, maybe three times, and they averaged it out for each person so that if they happened to do badly on, on one test, that, didn't, um, that wasn't their only score. So this average here is referring to within each person. So this first person here had an average hand time of four, oh, I'm going to say seconds. We could probably look in the variable view. Oh, we'd have to go back to the paper. The um, four seconds and their grip strength, I think, is measured in kilograms of 13 over the, the test that they did. So when we're looking at this paper, we might want to check that their groups, their condition groups, the one and the two, where one I believe was the intervention group where they were given that age related comparison trigger and two is the control. Um, we might want to check the design of the experiment and see if the groups were approximately equal to start with and this is what is covered in the table one baseline characteristics um, of the paper. So to begin looking at this I'll always do some graphs first. On our Laird website if we go through the the assumptions we want to check that our dependent variable is measured on the continuous scale and we're going to look at age being the dependent variable in this case to see if it's the same in the groups and that is continuous enough. Uh, the independent variable should have two categorical independent groups and we know that the conditions were separate it wasn't a before and after testing um, each person was put into a group and they did did it under the one condition so those groups are independent. The independence of observations will rely on how the the design was set up so you would need to read the methods of the paper to see how they carried out that study and I'm just going to assume that the the observations are independent. And here's where we get into some of the testing the assumptions that we should test before we carry out the t-test that we need to look at actually in SPSS. Um, we're looking if there's any significant outliers which might 
have a big pull on the mean. We're looking that each of the groups is approximately normally distributed and the homogeneity of variance is assumption. Now this one is actually done as a part of the test so you kind of have to run the t-test to get to this one but it's okay because if the if this assumption isn't met there's a different version of the test which SPSS will spit you out anyway so you kind of need it once you get to this stage. So if we look at age and condition to check for outliers the easiest thing to do is a box plot um, so I'm going to go down to box plot and drag that in. Now the y-axis is the dependent variable or the outcome which is continuous and what I'm interested in at the moment is age. The groups I'm interested in are the, the treatment or the condition group and the control group so I'll drag that in. I notice that SPSS has imported that as being ordinal whereas actually it's just nominal. Um, that won't really affect this at all. And the preview, of course, is completely wrong, so just ignore it. So if we look at our box plots, things to comment on. So first thing would be, I would advise you in your own data to go through and put some labels on these. So instead of one and two, we have the treatment and the control group. Um, if you're actually going to use these graphs, gosh, the colors are so ugly. I need to set all my default colors to have white as the background. I might as well change that while I'm there. So in terms of interpreting this, we can see that this middle line in the box plot, of course, is the median. The mean isn't actually shown on the default box plot. We're looking to see, are there any outliers? Now, if there were, they would be marked by an asterisk, and there's none here. We're looking to see um, well we can t see if there's any particular skewness in the data from a box plot but we'll see that also in the histogram and there doesn't appear to be and we might also be interested in just eyeballing the variation so we do have a similar amount of variation in both the groups um, and as I said with the t-test we'll get an actual test of variances as well so there's no problems in the data from this view now to do a histogram if for both of these because we want to check for normality. I should say that you can do a formal test for testing normality. I think if you're getting started it's it's easier just to look at the graphs and um, just see what you think. In Chart Builder we do have options for histograms. I personally don't like the stacked ones. I've, I find they're n not easy to read. The population pyramid will work if you've just got two groups, however that won't work if you've got three or more groups. So if I want to look at histograms split between groups, actually I tend to use the legacy dialogues and come down here to histogram. The variable we're interested in is still age. We would like to see the normal curve because we're checking, I think we must be up to assumption 4 to see if they're normal. and you can often see outliers in histograms as well if they're really obvious but they don't get marked with an asterisk like they do if there was one on the box plot. The rows, this is what we want to split by, so we're splitting by condition. Okay, so again just ignoring the colours. We have the distribution of ages for the comparison group and then the distribution of ages for the control group. Now the sample size in this particular study is not large, I think there were 28 in, in each group. So it's very unlikely that you'll get something that looks perfectly normal when you have a small sample size just because you don't have enough samples to sort of fill out the distribution. In this case I'm not concerned about this, it's normal enough. There's a little bit of, probably, a, I don't know, a little bit too much weight in the tails but again small sample size I'm not worried. In this bottom distribution it is looking a little bit chunky so it's going over we've got a few too many sort of in this 80 age group but then we've got none here and I think if we just clumped these into larger bins that would also look fairly normal so there's no particular skewness here um, there's nothing extreme going on so I'm going to accept that condition as being um, the data as being normal enough so once we've checked those two things we will actually go ahead and run the test and this will give us our test of variances. 
So all the tests are under Analyze and we're interested in comparing means. We have two independent groups, so we'll go to the independent samples t-test. Um, we're interested in the age and our grouping variable is condition. We do have to put the numbers in for the condition. So the, the groups were numbered 1 and 2. And that's it. Press OK. So in this output, it's always good just to look at the group statistics first. So we've got 28 in each group. The mean age was 82.7 and 82.1. Um, and the standard deviations are very similar. So already just looking at this, we can see that it doesn't really look like there's much of a difference. And honestly, we could see this in the box plots and in the histograms as well. They're looking pretty similar. The test for the equality of variances, so the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the variances or that the variances are equal. Significance is our p-value. We have, it's very high, so we have got no evidence to reject this. And so we can assume that the variances are equal. I really don't like the way that this is set out. It would be more helpful if this could be done, I think, as a separate little box there. So once we've said we'll assume the variances are equal, we can go ahead and read this top line, equal variances assumed. T is the test statistic. If you were calculating this out by hand, which is not too hard, um, this is the test statistic you would get. The degrees of freedom relates to the sample size in the, of the data, and you would need this again. If you're doing it by hand and looking up the p-value on um, tables, you would need the degrees of freedom for the T distribution. If you're not doing it by hand, these numbers don't really matter to you too much, but you may be required to report them as a part of reporting your results. What we are interested in here is the significance, and we're going to stick to two-tailed tests. Um, if you're interested in the difference between one tail and two tail, I would invite you to read some philosophical discussions on that. I'm quite happy to stick to two-tailed tests. In any case, the p-value is very high, even if you have it, it's still greater than 0.05. So we have absolutely no evidence that there is any difference in the mean age between the groups. So the null hypothesis is that the mean age is the same. We have no evidence to reject that, and we will accept that the two groups have the same mean age. The confidence interval for the difference completely covers zero from minus 3.2 to 4.5. Once we have found out whether or not we've got a significant difference, the last graph that we might want to do would be of the means and the confidence intervals. So the box plots, box plots show us all the data. We might want a similar plot, which is just the mean and the confidence interval around the mean. And we can get that through Chart Builder. And it's under bar chart just because they're called error bars, but it's, it's not really got anything to do with a bar chart. Uh, I'll just reset the data. I'll drag that in. Again, we're interested in age and... Uh, condition and so the mean for both of them is about 82 and the confidence intervals completely overlap so no evidence of any difference there